What is up? So today, guys, we are going to be talking about Ulysses Grant and uh, what he did, how his life was, how he became to be president, how he fought in the Civil War, all this great stuff. And then on, at the end, I will be talking about the next upcoming video, which I think you guys all will enjoy. All right, so let's begin with talking about Ulysses' early life. The early life of Ulysses Grant. Here we go. So he was born on April 27th, 1822 in Point Pleasant, Ohio. He was born to a family of leather makers. His dad and his uh, all his brothers worked in the leather making business and they were just widely known throughout the Colton states at this point. Um, the leather business, it was usually, it was, they were widely known throughout at the United States for their leather business. But it was usually like in Ohio and in the states and you know, physically near Ohio. And uh, his dad wanted him, just like his brothers, to go into the leather business. But Grant did not like the leather business. And this is where we get into some crucial stuff. So this is going to be, we're going to finish up the early life in this and we're going to go right into the middle life. So the early Ashman life, as I said before. So Grant loved horses. Because his father didn't want him to go into the leather business, because he didn't want to go into the leather business, his father decided to uh, enlist him in the United States Military Academy when he was 19. Because back then, that was a lad. I guess it was today. Um, so Grant graduated the Military Academy. And he did well in all his classes, especially horseback riding. However, when he graduated, they wanted to be part of the public of the cavalry. However, there was no space left on the cavalry, so they had made him an infantry soldier. And he continued to ride horses. So throughout his time at the academy, while he was learning, while he was studying, and uh, his time after, while he was stationed right there at the base on the academy, he would go down the road, and he made a friend at the academy. His family went down the road, and they would would ride horses because it was sort of therapeutic for Grant. Uh, he met his friend's sister when they had dinner at his friend's house from the. So the same uh, friend who he rides horses for, he met his sister when he invited to dinner one night. And Grant instantly fell in love with him. Married his friend's sister named Julia. None of Grant's family showed up at the wedding. Because, and this was because the Julius family, they had a bunch of slaves and they were pro-slavery. And Grant's father was a pure abolitionist. He didn't like slavery at all. So they kept going. So that's why none of Grant's family showed up to his wedding. So a month after the wedding, he got shipped out to fight in the U.S.-Mexican War. And while well, he was, he came back after the war as a commander... Uh, then he was deployed to a military base near present-day Washington State. So it was like in that, it was like up near Oregon, California. That's what's in Washington State in that area, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, so this is one of the most famous pictures that people, you'll see in a history class. This is a picture depicting Grant clinging to the side of a horse as he was racing through the gunfire to help another division of the U.S. infantry. So let's continue with the midlife. So after getting sent to Washington State, Grant soon fell into a slight depression, which is what historians believe fueled his drinking problem. And what I think a lot of us confirmed, he can't, uh, did fuel his drinking problem. And uh, a year and a half after being stationed at the base, he was told by his superior officer to either resign from the army because of his drinking or be court-martialed. So what does Grant do? Grant went back to his house and tried to work and make money, and this is after he resigned from the army. He was having a hard time supporting his family, which was his, his wife, and he already had two kids at this time. He moved back to Illinois. He left his family on the plantation, but he moved back to Illinois, and he was sending them money because he got a job working at one of his dad's... Um, Leather factories. Leather, not leather factory, but um, leather shops. So he would send the money back to his family and they needed it. 
And now we're going to look at the big picture, the United States at the point at at this point in time. So this point in time it's going to be about the 1860s, as it says above. So we are going to be uh so here's some key points around the 1860s. So the tension was rising between the North and South over slavery. Lincoln was elected president. Abraham Lincoln was elected president, which really outraged the South. And slavery became hotly contested in the United States Congress. So the U.S. at this point in time, 1861. So we're going to be looking here. You should be able to see my mouse. Um, so this map is a very good representation of sort of what it looked like back in the 1860s. So basically what happened in 1861 is Virginia became the first state to succeed from the Union. And all these states, along where I'm tracing it with my mouse, succeeded from the Union. Missouri didn't. Actually, Missouri did. And then this line right here is sort of the, div uh, the divide because they really didn't care about slavery. They were more focused on the gold rush. And the trans transcontinental railroad, excuse me. <laughs> um, and then, as I said before, the South, ex the South succeeds, starting with Virginia, and the Civil War begins. Grant during the Civil War. So Grant's friend in so this is a typo in the uh, presentation, but Grant's friend in Illinois um, was tasked with making an, um, an Illinois regiment for the war for that town because. Back in that time, you had a regiment, so each of the major cities would have a regiment. And then, so there would be like the Illinois, um, it would be like the Illinois 51st Regiment. That's the 51st city, the 51st town. I think it was actually each town was supposed to have a regiment. So he asked Grant to speak at the courthouse about his time in the service to try to influence some young folks to join. So Grant talked about it, and ultimately... Because of the Civil War, they allowed Grant to rejoin the army, but this time, because of his experience and his rank before, they let him join in as a general. And Grant did end up carrying out many attacks against the South. So here's our map again. So as we said, Grant was in Illinois, and um, this was the line. So Grant did a lot of attacks Along, along the Mississippi River, which sort of goes right up like this. And he did many attacks along the Mississippi River on Confederate bases, and he punched a hole through Kentucky. Actually, yeah, through Kentucky, and really got into this area right here, which was really controlled by Confederates. And um, this area... Oh, go back. Sorry about that, guys. Um, and then Grant made a big dent on this side while the general in who was in charge of the, trying to make a dent into Virginia, was not doing squat. i keep this appropriate, but he wasn't doing squat. They would attack, and then they'd retreat, and then they'd attack, and they fought many fierce battles over here, don't get me wrong. But they weren't making any headway. And Abe Lincoln sort of knew this, and he was watching Grant the whole entire war. And he watched him make so much headway down here. It was insane. Uh, so we're going to continue here, Grant, during the Civil War. So he won these battles and was slowly taking big chunks of land out of the Confederate States. And this is sort of on the western side. President Lincoln was, as I said before, he was watching. He got really impressed, so he moved Lincoln to the northeast to make progress there. Sorry, he, that's a typo. He moved Grant to the northeast to make progress there. I'm sorry, that's a typo, guys. Uh, so Grant's biggest challenge was taking control of Virginia and moving closer to the Confederate capital. And this is... The reason why Grant's biggest challenge was taking control of Virginia and moving closer to the Confederate capital was because one of the best United States generals who was tasked with leading Virginia's, the, that side of the Confederate army, was Robert E. Lee. And he was such a smart man. He was like the South equivalent of Grant. And you have these two just butting heads together. And he is just... They're both in really good war tactics, and it's just death, destruction for both sides. Um, so as the war continued, Grant won more battles and lost more battles, which was very true. And I wish I had another 
uh, picture of the uh, map here because if I did I would show you guys that as Grant is focusing on Virginia and that whole area he has other generals out west where he moved from uh, Virginia and Illinois that are focused on going down and around into Georgia and Florida and that was uh, General Sherman Sherman's March going all the way to the uh, Georgia coastline and they're all sort of going to converge and push all the Confederates towards Virginia, the Carolinas, and that area. Uh, so as I said, uh, so let's continue here. So Grant held the highest military position since General George Washington. George Washington, the first president of the United States, if you don't know who that was. He was a four-star general in the Revolutionary War. And nowadays it's a little bit more common when you look at our hierarchy of the military to have a four-star general. But back then, it really wasn't. Because they had multiple types of general, but a four-star general is super duper high. They like make all the shots. They report to the president, tell him what we're gonna do. Report to the secretary of I don't think it was defense back then. It was something different. They don't quote me on that. It could have been that. And um, as I said before, this position uh, the position was called the four-star general, and he was appointed to this by President Lincoln. So this is a quick little video. I'm not gonna play it um, during my. <laughs> I'm not gonna play this video, but I will put. A link to it in the description of this video if you want to watch this. This is just one of the craziest battles that Grant won, and it showed that his army intelligence and how smart he was. And as you can see by the title here, it was the Siege of Vicksburg. I recommend watching the video. You guys don't have to. And his the history channel didn't end up making a three part mini series, which will definitely be a little bit more in depth than I will on. Grant's life. I was just watching that too if you want to learn more about Grant. So now we're going to talk about the end of the war. And this is going to be the last couple slides, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, guys and girls. So the end of the war. The war was slowing down as Grant's and Lincoln's armies moved in on the Confederate capital. So basically just think of the capital, which is Virginia. Just getting surrounded from the back. There's the armies pushing up the back and the front of Virginia. So the front being uh, the uh, face of Virginia facing Maryland, the back being the side of Virginia facing uh, the Carolinas. <clears throat> uh, the Union seized the Confederate capital, and the war was almost over. And then tragedy strikes, and this is almost two years, right on the cusp of being one year before the presidential election. Lincoln was assassinated by Booth at the play, as you guys all know. And Andrew Johnson became president. A few fun facts about Andrew Johnson you might not know. He was a white supremacist. He did not agree a lot during this period after the Civil War, which is called Reconstruction, which if you haven't seen those videos, I have posted those already on my channel. And now those videos will actually explain a little bit more about Andrew Johnson. But um, Grant got elected in 1868 to be the president after defeating Horatio Seymour of the Democratic Party. Grant served two terms before retiring to his house in New York City. And during this time, he did invest some money into some businesses. Uh, I think it was his nephew's business or something like that. And he basically got robbed. And then Grant wrote a book because he was still trying to provide for his family. And it talked all about his life. It was almost like an autobiography. And then in 1885, Grant passed away. Uh, due to what present-day doctors would call throat cancer, and this was because of an old-known thing about Grant that most people don't know. Most people know that he was an alcoholic, that he drank a lot, but another thing was is people, the um, Union citizens, the Northern people, were so happy with how Grant was doing in the war that they would send him cigars. So he smoked so many cigars that he gave himself throat cancer, which ultimately ended up killing him. And that is going to be the end of this video. Make sure to stay tuned because I'm going to be posting a video very, very, very soon on either World War One or World War Two. I'd just like to thank you guys for watching. You guys are great. Make sure if you do like these videos to like, subscribe, comment, and share. And hopefully these are helping you out in school. Thanks, guys.